Coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now here's your host, publisher of Eye on Annapolis, John Frenet. Good morning. It's Tuesday, May 29th, 2018. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Dominating the news today is Ellicott City. Once again, they are dealing with the ravages of a flood that came down Main Street, ruining businesses and homes. Late Sunday afternoon, Doppler radar suggests that more than 9.5 inches of rain fell on the area within a matter of two hours. That is more than double the monthly rainfall for the area. Governor Larry Hogan has declared a state of emergency, which will free up some federal and state funds to help the city recover. Howard County Executive Alan Kittleman is encouraging anybody that wants to see the damage to stay away. Let the first responders, let public works, let the officials take care of what needs to be taken care of until it's all settled down. Residents that are in need of a place to stay can go to the Roger Carter Community Center on Milltown Drive, and that's open for residents that may need shelter. Tragically, a National Guardsman is missing in the flood. 39-year-old Edison Hermond of Severn was reported missing, and he was last seen about 5.20 p.m. on Sunday near the La Plapa Girl and Cantina. That was at the height of the flash flooding, and he has not been seen since. There is a photo of him circulating, dressed in his fatigues, near a military jeep, and police have confirmed that that is indeed him. If anybody knows about his whereabouts, they are asked to call Howard County Police. If you're looking to help out, there are some ways that you can do it. The nonprofit Ellicott City Partnership has set up HelpEllicottCity.com, which was the same one set up in 2016 to accept donations for businesses, residents, and property owners. The Howard County Food Bank at Gerwig Lane in Columbia is accepting water, cleaning supplies, flashlights, and other donations to help the Ellicott City flood relief. Right now, they need peanut butter, cereal, canned foods, and supplies such as rubber and work gloves, paper towels, rags, bleach, and disposable coveralls. The Community Foundation of Howard County has also activated their fund to help, and you can learn more information at cfhoco.org. And finally, if you're looking to volunteer to help in the cleanup, which is not happening immediately, but it will be happening in the coming days, you can sign up at howardcountymd.gov slash disaster recovery volunteer. It's a long URL. I'll repeat it one more time. HowardCountyMD.gov slash Disaster Recovery Volunteer. On Friday, the United States Naval Academy graduated 1,042 midshipmen under a bright sunny sky that gave everybody a little bit of dose of sunburn. 784 were commissioned as Navy ensigns, 237 as Marine Corps second lieutenants, one as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Air Force, and there were 11 foreign national students that graduated from the Naval Academy. President Donald Trump did address the graduates in about a 35-minute long speech, which you can catch on ionanapolis.net. We have the full speech that was recorded there, as well as all sorts of coverage, including pictures from Glenn Miller. So do check that out. Some good Samaritans in Crofton pulled a man from a car after it flipped over in Crofton and caught fire. Just before noon on Sunday, a 42-year-old man was removed from the car by bystanders, and they do believe that he may have had a medical emergency prior to the accident. He was taken to shock trauma center with serious injuries, and they don't believe it is to be life-threatening. Maryland waterways are proving to be pretty deadly this year. There is the fifth reported death so far this year. A 51-year-old Severna Park man was killed early Sunday morning when his boat struck a marker up near the headwaters of the Severn River. First responders were called to the scene around 2 a.m. The boat was brought into a private pier in Crownsville where paramedics attempted to revive the man, but he was declared dead at the scene. The body was transported to the office of the chief medical examiner for an autopsy and cause of death. And following up on a story we had earlier, a little bit of a he said, she said, the U.S. Department of Homeland Security has said that it will issue an additional 15,000 guest worker or H-2B visas this year above the previous allocations, allowing more immigrant workers to come into the United States to fill job vacancies. This theoretically would help out the seafood labor shortage that we're seeing on the eastern shore. 
However, Bill Sealing, director of the Chesapeake Bay Seafood Industries Association, said, We haven't heard a word. Of the 81,000 foreign workers who applied for the temporary work visas, only 33,000 were approved in May. Now, crab houses on the eastern shore find themselves without enough American workers to meet demands, and in some cases, too few employees to open up at all. That's it for the top news this morning. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net for all the news as we do update that continuously throughout the day. And a real quick plug for the Maryland Crabs coming up a little bit later this week on Thursday. We had a long sit-down conversation with former county executive John Leopold. Quite an interesting man, quite an interesting story. You'll definitely want to check that out. You can get it at themarylandcrabs.com. Hang tight. We have George Young with your local DMV weather coming up. And he's here right after Sean O'Neill with RBC Wealth Management. I'm Sean O'Neill, your local RBC Wealth Management Advisor. More than likely, the primary reason you save and invest is to achieve your life goals while ensuring your long-term financial well-being. But before you can determine your preparedness towards your goals, you need long-term answers to important questions about how much money you need, where it will come from, and how long it will last. RBC Wealth Plan, a new industry-leading tool, is now available to help answer these questions and develop your personal plan using a conversational approach. With RBC Wealth Plan, we can create a personal analysis based on these unique goals while offering you the ability to weigh certain decisions and determine what's best for you and your family. Call me, Sean O'Neill, today at 410-573-6723 for a complimentary consultation. RBC Wealth Management, a division of RBC Capital Markets, LLC. Member NYSE, FINRA, and SIPC. This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather, and this is your Ion Annapolis forecast for Tuesday, May 29th. Wow, what a holiday weekend weather-wise behind us. Heat and humidity, big storms, another 1,000-year flood in Ellicott City, and finally a cool gray day yesterday to cap it all off. And that's been the theme of the entire month of May, really, a constant battle between cool and warm air with what seems like a constantly lurking frontal boundary of some sort dividing these two air masses, providing near-daily chances of rain for what will go down in the books as one of the wetter months of May on record, especially if we get more showers and storms over the next few days to close out the month, which is entirely possible as the forecast is for a chance of showers and storms every day today through the weekend. So let's recap real fast the top three things to do in a flash flood situation. First and foremost, stay aware of the forecast. Our saying of always stay weather informed exists for this very reason, as being aware of the overall situation up front is critical to not being caught off guard in the moment, and in the moment, every moment counts. Next, should flash flooding occur, either get to higher ground immediately or get to the highest level possible of the home or building that you're in so you're not at risk or you minimize the risk of floodwaters sweeping you away. And third, if out and about on the roadways, this is probably the most important. Never try to use a water-covered roadway in any fashion as just a few inches of moving water across a roadway can move a vehicle. So stay tuned throughout the entire week and into the weekend as the forecast is for showers and thunderstorms each day and evening in the Annapolis area all the way through Sunday. And while not every storm will materialize for your specific spot on the map, nor will storms automatically happen at all each day, it's important to tune into the potential and stay informed so you are prepared one way or the other. Okay, that's it for us today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Be sure to follow DMV Weather every day on our website at dmvweather.com and on Facebook and Twitter, as well as, most importantly, we think, on our app, which you can download for free by searching for DCMD VA Weather in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. And with that in mind, make it a great week ahead. Definitely tune into the forecast each day so you can always stay weather informed. But remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. Hey, it's May, and it's Maryland Podcast Month. No, Hallmark didn't invent this puppy, so there's no need to get a card, but do yourself a favor and give a listen to some of the other Maryland-based podcasts. Our right-wing friends, hey, they called us liberals first, at Red Maryland have put together a website called MarylandPodcastMonth.com, and it lists all of the podcasts that are participating this month. Throughout the month of May, many of us will be showing up on other Maryland podcasts as guests. And we'll have all sorts of antics throughout the month. Among the participants are Red Maryland and Ion Annapolis, of course, and then others to cover every topic you can possibly think of. 
Podcasts such as Quality Time, The Maryland Crabs, A History of Maryland, The Conduit Street Podcast, Laugh Finder, The Extra Point Show, Society Fringe Players, The Mark and Lowell Show, The Engine Mom Podcast, and quite a few more. So go to MarylandPodcastMonth.com, check it out, get familiar with a new podcast near you, and of course, please let all your friends and associates know as well. And we will see you all May during Maryland Podcast Month. Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.